<sighs> so, yeesh, what a weekend we've had here on BookTube. Right, hello everybody. Welcome to Story Nut. My name is Hannah and today I would like to talk to you about something that's been going on a lot this weekend. And that is the discussion on reviewing books, the worth of reviews, and being critical. I spent a long time debating with myself whether I wanted to do this or not, but I just was like, what the hell? You know, you only live once. Oh God, did I just say that? I did. YOLO! And so, <laughs> I'm doing this. Yep, I am. There was a discussion on reviews and the importance of being critical in your reviews. Um, the discussion was started, I believe, by Barry from Baz Pierce and Ariel Bissett. Basically what it boils down and what kind of started this whole thing is that there was um, an offhand remark that was made that said that reviews that aren't critical can be considered worthless. And obviously there was a lot of backlash with that um, and the both Barry and Ariel have already addressed that. I'm not going to talk too, too much about that side of things. There's a lot of videos out there that have discussed this in a way that is a lot more articulate than anything that I could. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link them down below, as well as um, possibly make a playlist with the videos that I that are surrounding this topic. What I basically think is that both sides of this argument have great points that they make. And at the same time, both sides of this argument have said some things that were uncalled. And basically, I think everything would go a lot more smoothly if before you react to a comment or a, a video or whatever, take a step back and think, is what I'm going to say, is it going to move the conversation forward or is it just going to keep us stranded in this whirlpool of anger and emotion and just a lot of, a lot of, ah, yeah. And I think only then can we move forward and discuss the actual issues at hand here. Um, nevertheless, I do think, I'm actually glad that this happened, not the negative sides of it, but the fact that we're discussing this right now and we're discussing what it means to be reviewing things critically and reading critically. Because I actually, a few weeks ago, I was thinking about making a video regarding this topic and I just chickened out because, because I did. But now I'm doing it, so yay! <laughs> um, basically, where I'm coming from is that I'm on the be critical side of things. I think Ariel and Barry have a lot of great points that they're making and they're both correct in saying that we do need to be critical in the way we read and review things. And I'm going to take it a step further and say that not only do we need to be critical moving forward, but we also be, need to be critical going back and looking at the things that we love. So your favorite books, your favorite TV shows, your favorite movies, your favorite music. Look at it. Think of it critically. Is there things in it that could be improved? Are there things in those things that you love that could be considered problematic for some people? It doesn't mean that you love the book, the movie, the TV show, whatever, any less. It just means that you recognize that there is some flaws in it. I think people are misunderstanding the be critical movement a little bit because it's not saying that we should hate everything and just give one star reviews to everything. What it is saying, however, is that we should be looking out for things that could be improved. So a lot of things that are discussed right now, such as um, the We Need Diverse Books movement, um, the strong female character discussion, the um, talking about including mental health and characters with disability in reading in our books. Those things stem from reading critically. If we don't read critically, we don't notice these things. And so I do think that the Be Critical movement is important because without it, we can't move forward. So I also think an important point here is that we can be critical of things we love. So I'm going to use the example of Game of Thrones, a TV show that's very popular, a TV show that is one of my favorite TV shows. However, if you ask friends of mine in real life if it is my favorite TV show, they will probably tell you that it's not. Why is that? Because I'm always ranting about it. Um, I think Game of Thrones is an excellent TV show, however, I think it has major flaws such as their um, exploitation of rape as a plot device or, you know, 
shock value thing to do, their lack of diversity with characters that were actually diverse in the books. A lot of albiism. There's a lot of things in Game of Thrones that I have issues with. However, it's still my favorite, like one of my favorite shows. It's still, I still think it's a well-written show with great characters and great writers. I just think it has issues. And that's okay. That's totally okay. Um, I'll, the same is with um, the genre of fantasy, for example. I think there are a lot of fantasy classics that I will not be reading because I don't think they meet up to my standards of diversity, um, complex characters, whatever. Because now that other people have read critically, and pointed out those flaws, there are other books that have been published that have that, that have diverse characters, that have complex females, that have a lot of more interesting things. And I'm much more interested in reading the stuff that I think fulfills those requirements than I am in reading stuff that might be considered classics in the genre, but is not up to my standards. Um, the same, I think, could be applied to other genres. So the big one, obviously, here is YA. I'm not a huge, huge reader of YA, although that shelf over there will contradict me. <laughs> this is basically my YA shelf. Um, but the thing is, there are things in YA that could be improved. There are things in YA that are great. Um, one instance of things that could be improved is something that I've heard other people mention, but I haven't noticed myself, and that is the... Um, tendency for YA books to portray certain relationships as desirable when they're actually emotionally abusive and like kind of unhealthy. So I don't know too too much about this but I've heard people say that. So point is that with critical reading and being critical when you point that out there's going to be less of that and there's going to be books that address those issues in the future. The reason we need to be critical now is so that we can see better literature, better art, better movies, better TV shows in the future. <sighs> I don't know if you guys know this quote, but I I forget where it comes from, but it basically goes like this. We are the books we read, the movies we love, the TV shows we follow, the music we listen to, and I believe in that quote. I think 10,000 years from now when people look back at us, they're going to look at our culture and the things that we used to love, and that's what they're going to judge us with. And so I do think that that's important, and I think criticizing those things that we love is extremely important. And that is why I'm a huge fan of the Be Critical movement, and I think it's a great movement. Only by pointing out those things that are flawed can we move forward. And those things can be found in our favorite books. doesn't make them any less of our favorite. Um, and because I'm spouting off about this, I've decided to do a little activity, if you may. So I pointed out um, Game of Thrones is one of my favorite TV shows and it has its flaws and now I'm going to show you a book that I love greatly and that I'm going to point out a flaw in. Please tell me that you did see this coming. I love this book a lot. Anybody who has been watching my channel knows that. I love Scott Lynch and I love The Rise of La Clamora and I love the series. But I think there is something that stands out to me and that I think I would like to see changed in the future. Um, it took me a long time to figure out what that is. But for me, it is the portrayal of Sabatha. Sabatha is one of the... It's, she's probably the most prominent female character in this book, in this series. Um, and we don't see her until the third book. And even then, like, we don't really get to see her point of view. We get to like see her from other people's point of views, and mostly it's from other male characters' point of views. And so I would like to see more of Sabatha and more of Sabatha's point of view of her own thoughts and opinions, and we don't really get to see that. And although I think she was portrayed in an excellent way, I think I would like to see more of Sabatha as Sabatha, not Sabatha as seen from Locke's point of view or whoever. So... That's my issue with the Gentleman Bastard series. It was very hard to come up with it. And that's that's what I mean, though. It's really hard for people to come up with something they dislike about their favorite things, but it's easier to come up with criticisms of things that you don't care too, too much about, but it's a lot harder to come up with criticisms of the things that you're emotionally attached to. And I believe that that's where we need to be criticizing. Not only do we need to be criticizing things we, we experience 
from now on, but we also need to be looking back and looking into ourselves. But yeah, that's what I think of this whole be critical thing. Those are my thoughts. Um, I also want to emphasize that although I think the be critical movement is extremely important, as many, many people have said, if you're not comfortable doing that or if you'd prefer to watch other things or do other types of videos, that is up to you. No one can tell you what to do and no one can tell you you can't be in a particular community or space because we're all just people with cameras or laptops making videos and anyone can do that and it's not something special. But it is important for us to realize that we have an effect, especially people who have a wide, wide audience. And I think that's where Ariel was coming from, and I think she has a great point. Um, one example that I can think of is um, Peru's Project. She loves the book, she loved the book Mistborn by Brenda Sanderson, the trilogy. And I remember her first hauling it, and then within like a month of um, Reagan, Reagan hauling that book, so many people read that book and bought that book, and I think it's important for us to realize that we do have potential to affect a lot of people. And that's where I think Ariel was coming from, and I think she has a great point. So, yeah. That is all I have to say. <laughs> I hope um, my message came across clearly. Feel free to post your own comments down below with your thoughts on this. Um, and if you do this thing where you get a book you, you love and you find something that you wish could be improved in, That'd be cool. Let me know what those books are. And yeah, that's all from me. I will see you guys later.